The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Oostros here with realagriculture.com. I'm back here today with another Wheat School episode, and I have here with me Monica Kloss, who is with the uh, Ducks Unlimited, the Winter Wheat Initiative. How's it going today? It's great, Kara. Thanks. So... We're here today to talk about winter wheat. We're at that time of the year. I mean, it, it looks cloudy out here now, but believe it or not, it's August and we're looking at planning to seed our winter wheat. Do you want to talk a bit about what some of the things are that go into planning? Okay, well, really good point, Kara. So next year does start now. And even though August, we're here at the beginning of August, it is too early to actually seed winter wheat today but it is absolutely the time that you need to start getting ready. So some of the steps involved in getting ready for winter wheat is field selection. So what field are you planning on putting winter wheat on? Most farmers are selecting uh, something that comes off very early like a canola or possibly even peas. Um, we have found that success goes up when you're using a canola field. The canola stubble actually acts as a protective uh, sort of a wind barrier and then in the winter time when we get snow it traps the snow to leave that nice blanket of so snow over top of your winter wheat. So field selection is a really good and important thing. The second thing is your seed source and I know this sounds very very elementary but if you don't have cookies in your house you don't eat them. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the winter wheat seed in your field or on your farm you're not going to plant winter wheat and so it's really really important to get ready and get your seed on the farm. This time of year we get a lot of questions about variety selection and I always drive people over to the website seed.ab.ca um, and so it's the, the regional variety trial website that houses all of that information. There will be a page on winter wheat and growers can look at that as far as how the varieties came out of those regional variety trial. Um, when you're selecting your variety, I always say start with the end in mind. So what are you going to be using that crop for? Are you going to be selling it into the feed market, maybe into an ethanol market? Maybe you have a milling contract or maybe you want to keep your op options open. Uh, we have a lot of people that are now selecting winter wheat as sort of a bridge using it maybe as a bit of fall grazing and then they overwinter it and you know use it as a grain crop the next year. Now there are some limitations to that uh, so don't expect that you can graze it in the fall and then get you know a 120 bushel crop of it next year but you know kind of depending on how hard you graze it etc etc so definitely start with the end in mind and then select for your area so if you're south of highway one here in alberta you can essentially select any variety and you're going to have really good success when you get a little bit north, your crop insurance deadlines start to change. So south of Highway 1, your seeding date is September 30th. North of Highway 1, then it's September 15th. So your optimum seeding date is around that beginning of September. I always say Labor Day is a really good winter wheat seeding day. Um, we're here today near um, Edmonton and I do have some work over in Westlock and we looked at seeding dates in that in that site we had a seeding date of September 7th and then another seeding date of September 21st and the differences between those two seeding dates are like night and day so absolutely the earlier seeding date is the one that you would want to select so seed as early as you can um, and again, when you're selecting a variety, when you're, you know, into areas where, you know, you might be a little bit crunched for time, 
don't just go to the area of those variety tables and look at yield. Look at some of your other factors. So if you're in an area where you have high moisture and maybe you have high nutrient levels because you're using manure or whatever, you know, look at lodging, look at straw strength, and then also look at your days to maturity. Uh, talk to your local seed growers, your seed farms, your seed retailers, and get a recommendation from them as well. So that's, that's the number one thing on variety selection, Kara. Do you want to talk about some of the risks of planting too early if you're not actually planning and paying attention to some of these things? What could happen? Okay, so if you are trying to grow winter wheat strictly for a grain crop, planting too early can have a few downfalls. So number one is related to what we call the green bridge. And that's when there's a lot of green material in neighboring fields, maybe the ditches around your field, or maybe even weeds within your field. Um, and then what you do is you get uh, weeds as well as pathogens, insects that will sort of jump from one crop into your fall crop. So that's the big thing. The other thing that can happen, we don't see it that commonly, but it definitely can happen, is if your plant is too large going into the winter, and what your end game is, is specifically for a grain crop, it's not for silage or for grazing or forage or anything, then sometimes what we see with those really big robust plants is it takes a lot of energy to get them started again in the spring. So we really like plants going into the overwintering phase that are like two to three leaves, maybe a tiller or whatever. So they're sort of a compact, nice little plant going into the winter time. Okay, and when we're looking at field selection, we talked about, you know, looking at the stubble situations like that. What other things are you gonna to wanna to keep in mind? Really, uh, timing is the big thing. So whatever field is ready is the one that you want to pick. Again, I talked a little bit about how we really like canola. Um, I just had a call from a farmer who is planning on using a pea field. And our caution about that is, even if you have desiccated your peas and those vines are dead, they don't break down like they do if they've had the winter season. So if you go into a pea field, you have to be very, very mindful that those v vines will have the propensity to wrap around your equipment. And I have seen this very, very common, then you're seeding too deep because those vines will drag soil with it. And instead of having that nice seeding depth of half an inch to an inch, you're all of a sudden at two to three inches. So just be very, very mindful about vines wrapping and then the a secondary thing is if you're in a situation where you have little organic matter that you should really try not to use a pulse crop field just because of lack of stubble now if you have really good organic matter say that you're up here in the black soil zone you know maybe that's not such a huge issue I just really think that a fall seeded cereal is a wonderful way for farmers to spread out their workload. I just heard um, a, a new term today, it's called climate smart agriculture. And I, the more I think about winter wheat, I really think that it fits into climate smart winter wheat. It gets uh, a growing season a little bit off of what your spring crops are and hopefully you can miss you know maybe some of that head disease like fusarium and from time to time your weather patterns are just a little bit different i've heard stories of people harvesting winter wheat getting it into the bin it's dry and it's number one and you don't have to dry it um, and so you know to that i think it really fits into that terminology climate smart agriculture thanks okay. Kara. thank you very much monica